Greetings, friends. My name is Kathy Chatelaine, and I serve as one of the assistants to Bishop Regina Hassanali. And today, on this Wednesday of Holy Week, I'd like to share with you a spiritual practice that I have observed for many years during Holy Week, the Stations of the Cross. Christians, for over a millennia, has, have observed the Stations in many ways. The Stations began first as early Christians returned to Jerusalem on pilgrimages to retrace the steps of Jesus on his way to the cross. In the 15th century, Christians began to gather in homes and churches to observe the stations. And by the 17th century, it was made formalized in the traditional stations, often reflected in words and in art. These continue to this day. Pope John Paul II in 1991 modified the stations to better reflect um, what really occurs in scripture. Today, what I'd like to share with you is a hybrid model of the traditional plus the scriptural. And I'm going to be featuring photos that I took at Duke University Chapel about eight years ago. These photos are of the relief artwork that John Silvestri created. It's called Relief Sculpture. And Silvestri took um, oil drums from his native Haiti and created these beautiful works of art that reflect the Stations of the Cross, Jesus's journey to the cross. Now let us enter into a reflective space where we can meditate upon Jesus's journey to the cross. Station one. Jesus is condemned to die. Hear the words of Mark 15, beginning with verse 1. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate answered him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused Jesus of many things. Pilate asked Jesus again, have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you? But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Station two, Jesus carries his cross. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. They cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate asked them, shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, huh, we have no king but the emperor. Then he handed Jesus over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. Station three, Jesus falls for the first time. Station four, Jesus meets his mother. Station five, Simon helps Jesus carry his cross. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. 
Station six, a woman, traditionally known as Veronica, wipes Jesus's face. Station seven, Jesus falls for the second time. Station eight, Luke meets the women of Jerusalem. A great number of people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Station nine, Jesus falls for the third time. Station 10, Jesus is stripped. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. Station 11, Jesus is nailed to the cross. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Station 12, Jesus dies on the cross. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. When the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two, then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. Station 13, Jesus is taken down from the cross. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth, and laid it in a tomb that it had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid. Station 14, Jesus is laid in the tomb. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth 
and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Let us pray. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. May the peace, hope, and joy in our resurrected Jesus inspire you to love all people in your thoughts through your words, and by your actions. Amen.